For the past 18 months, Intel has been prancing a new processor design to the press and public as an epitome of new processor innovation. Codenamed as Lakefield chips, the new processors are called Intel Core processors with Intel hybrid technology, which is mouthful. This new SoC debuts two major technologies on Intel's chipset and in our today's video we'll explain what Lakefield chips are and how Intel plans to thwart the looming threat of ARM CPUs taking over the laptop and portable PC market. Hey everyone, I'm Chaser and welcome to Take a Square. In one of our previous videos, we explained how ARM is becoming a viable alternative for laptop, notebook, tablet, and portable PCs with its prospect of being power efficient and creating always connected devices. Qualcomm has been trying to do that for quite some time, and Apple leading the charge, ARM becoming a strong contender of these types of devices may not take too long. Anyways, our today's video is not about how ARM is growing threat to Intel's PC market. You can follow the link from the top right corner to watch the video on that topic. Our today's topic is Intel's Lakefield chips and we can start with what Lakefield is. The Lakefield processors are designed on the basic principle of big little style architecture with x86. This process may seem familiar as the process resembles ARM's processor made by Qualcomm and other manufacturers which use big little architecture. Lakefield processor's hybrid core setup works by combining a more powerful core class 10 nanometer single Sonicove core for heavier workloads and four low power Atom class Tremont cores on a single die. The Sonic Cove cores are the same 10 nanometer architecture the 10th generation Ice Lake chips are based on. The Sonic Cove core inside the chip is going to handle heavier workloads. While the Tremont cores are Intel's more power efficient Atom cores found on low TDP CPUs and they will be handling less intensive background tasks. Intel's hope is that this arrangement will allow a balance of power, efficiency, and battery life that is purely core and purely atom setup could achieve. What is Lakefield? In modern processors for laptops, desktops, and servers, there is only one type of core design, either with all core or all atom setup, depending on the desired performance and intended purpose of those chips. This has been going on for more than 30 years on the PC and server market. However, in this smartphone space, for the last decade, manufacturers are taking a different approach. The smartphone manufacturers combine a number of big cores with a number of small cores, which in return offers an intrinsic benefit of running background tasks on the little cores where efficiency is needed. While the big cores are employed where latency and performance are important as the user experience related elements, Intel's hybrid core Lakefield processors are designed keeping that same principle in mind. There is another big innovation from Intel at play here, which is 3D Foveros stacking technology. This technology allows a far compact package than traditional designs. The Lakefield processors are broken into three layers, two of which are logic dice that contain the five CPU cores, Intel's integrated UHD graphics GPU, and various I.O. elements, while the third bundles of DRAM which helps further cut down on space. According to Intel, the new Lakefield chips take up to 56% smaller package area for up to 47 smaller board sizes compared to Intel Core i7-8500Y processor. So in other words, the new Lakefield chips are intended to be Intel's best effort to face off ARM chipsets for ultra-portable laptop and tablet form factors. Now all this, in theory, looks very promising. But the question remains if Lakefield processors really stand a chance against Qualcomm's processor. The new chips will be found on Intel's version of Galaxy Book S, which also had an ARM model, powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8CX. There is also foldable Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Fold and upcoming dual-screen Surface Neo. Thanks to Notebook Check, we have some idea about the performance of the Lakeview processors. The Galaxy Book S Intel Edition is equipped with the Lakefield Core i5-L16 G7 processor. Intel combined a fast up to 3 GHz Sonicove core found on Ice Lake U series CPUs with four up to 1.8 GHz Tremont Atom cores. This hybrid processor also includes a fast integrated GPU. The cores do not support hyper threading, which means each core can only execute one thread as the operating system decides how the load is distributed among the cores. According to the test by NotebookCheck.com, the single core performance of the new chip is disappointing as they even fall behind old Amber Lake dual core M3 8100Y processors. However, performance in the multi core test is better and at least on par with the efficient Core i7-8500Y and Pentium or Celeron models are beaten as well. The graphics performance is much lower compared to a regular Iris Plus graphics G7 due to the lower clock of the iGPU and sits between the UHD graphics 615 and 620. 
Based on the test results by NotebookCheck.com, we can say the Lakefield processors could work and can become a viable alternative against ARM chips on the portable PC devices. Its initial consumption measurements are low and the graphics performance is good considering the low TDP. The chips are still required to go through some fine tuning, but they report good performance so far. However, Intel's Lakefield CPU will get the most advantage since the processor is based on x86 architecture. As a result, it supports 64-bit applications and you don't have to settle for a slim down Windows. Instead, you can use the device equipped with the Lakefield processor without any limitation when you run apps and you'll be able to use the device as a regular notebook. Since there are very few applications that are optimized run on ARM-based processors, even the Windows operating system isn't fully optimized to run on ARM. So even though ARM promises a lot of things like really low power consumption to run the device for a whole two days and powerful and enough to outperform current CPUs, they are still a long way from achieving that. And even if they are successful in achieving that, app developers are also required to optimize their apps. This could take more time since there aren't a lot of users for ARM-based processors and without a proper third-party app support, ARM won't be able to attract a lot of users, which could result into lower adoption rate for an ARM. Anyways, it is still too early to say which way the market is going to shift. Both platforms have their kinks and both show great promise. If Intel can switch to the smaller fabrication process and solve their production issues, then it would be easier for Intel to attract OEM partners and users to their new Lakefield processors. So that's all for today's video. If you liked the video, then hit the like and share it with your friends. Comment below to let us know your thoughts, consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this and press the bell icon to get notified for our future videos.